Hello, I'm Chris, and today we're reviewing the anatomy of the clavicle bone. As always, let's figure out what the heck we're looking at. We're looking at the right clavicle bone from an anatomical position. We have a superior view on the top, which means you're looking at the bone from above, and on the bottom, we have an inferior view, which means you're looking at the bone from below, and an anterior view in the middle, which means you're looking straight ahead at the bone. The clavicle bone is also known as the collarbone. It's in the family of long bones. However, the long bones must have kicked them off the family tree because it's the only long bone that lays horizontal on the human body. Every other bone, long bone that is, is vertical. The clavicle bone can be broken up into three sections. Oh, did I say break? Oops. You have to be careful with these uh, clavicle bones. They tend to break. In fact, it's the most commonly broken bone in the human body. Now you're a bit smart. That'll be five bucks for your degree. You're welcome. Okay. How about we divide this bone up into three sections instead? Since the clavicle is all uh, sensitive about the word break. On the left side of the bone, we're looking at the lateral end, known as the chromial end. And on the right side of the bone, we have the medial end, known as the sternal end. The sternal end connects to the sternum, and the chromial end connects to the chromium of the scapula. In the middle, we have the shaft, the body of the clavicle. And I'm really sorry, but we have to do a little bit more math. The shaft is also divided into two parts. You got the lateral one-third, and then you got the medial two-thirds. The lateral end is flat, and the medial end is round, kind of like a flat-headed screwdriver, which I think is actually a good way to remember that the lateral end is flat, because it looks like a dysfunctional flat-headed screwdriver. Both the lateral end and the medial end have two surfaces and two borders. The lateral one-third surfaces are referred to as the upper surface, which is on top, and the lower surface, which is on bottom whereas the medial end is referred to as the superior surface, which is on top, and the inferior surface, which is on bottom. Now, both the lateral and the medial sides of this shaft have an anterior and posterior border. Okay, we made it through that, I hope. Moving on. In person, the clavicle is easy to identify top versus bottom, because the superior portion of the bone is mostly smooth as a baby's bottom, maybe a few scattered warts, and the inferior portion is rough as my relationships. No. Okay, that's that's not a good reference, but just imagine a rock being buried in the sand for a long time, and the wind and the water will make the top of the rock smooth, but the buried portion will remain untouched and rough. So overall, the top is smooth, and the bottom is rough. Okay, now if you're looking at the clavicle from an anatomical position, which means you're staring at the anterior border, the medial portion is going to be convex, and the lateral portion is going to be concave. We also know that the top is smooth and the bottom is rough. The convex and concave curvature of the clavicle almost makes it look like two giant fish hooks are coming out of your sternum. Well, if, if you break off the ends of the fish hooks at least. Now let's get roughed up and look at the undercarriage of the clavicle bone from an inferior view. Let's start on the lateral end, the chromial end, and work our way medially. On the chromial end, we have the chromial faucet. This faucet articulates with the chromium of the scapula, and this makes up for the chromioclavicular joint. Then we move on to the first bony landmark. It's the trapezoid line. It provides an attachment site for the trapezoid ligament. Then we have the conoid tubercle. It's located here, and it provides an attachment site for the conoid ligament. Those two ligaments we just mentioned are part of the corcoclavicular ligament. Next up is the subclavian groove. And no, that's not the name of a nightclub. It's an actual groove in the bone, and it's where the subclavius muscle inserts. Now to the left, where the lateral portion of the subclavian groove is where you will see... What the heck? Nope, that's not a nipple. Almost got me. It's actually a nutrient foramen. And its job is the same as the nipple, though. It provides nutrients to make a strong, healthy bone through the nutrient artery. Here's another did you know moment. The clavicle bone is one of the first bones to start growing in your mommy's belly. And one of the last bones to stop growing when you're about 21 to 25 years old. Next up, we have the impression for the costoclavicular ligament. And as the name says, this is where the ligament attaches. Now, don't confuse this with the coracoclavicular ligament. This is the costoclavicular ligament. Costo meaning ribs. Now we have arrived to the medial end of the clavicle, which is the sternal end. Located here is the sternal faucet, which articulates with the manubrium 
of the sternum to make up the sternoclavicular joint. Now that we know this bone like the back of our hands, we can move on to the origins and insertions of the clavicle bone. That video is up next. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and you can become my best friend by following me on social media on any of these four sites. You can become a Patreon and help support me to make more videos in the future. Until next time, as always, happy studying, my friends.